The following video is intended to assist school officials with complying with the new regulations requiring the development and implementation of a lead sampling plan. These new requirements can be found in Title 10 of the New York State Code of Rules and Regulations under Subpart 67-4. These regulations apply to all New York State public schools and boards of cooperative educational services, including those already classified as a public water system. Before testing for and correcting lead problems, evaluate the school building's plumbing system and assess the factors that may contribute to lead contamination. An evaluation should identify all outlets that are used or could be potentially used for drinking and or cooking purposes. All identified outlets must be sampled for lead, including drinking water fountains or bubblers, classroom sinks, bathroom sinks, kitchen sinks, and athletic field concession stands. Based on this information, the school can develop a sampling plan, including assigning unique identification numbers to each outlet to be sampled. School officials must select a laboratory that is certified by the New York State Department of Health Environmental Laboratory Approval Program, referred to as ELAP, to conduct lead testing in drinking water. The list of approved laboratories is located at this link. Contact the laboratory to obtain chain of custody forms and 250 milliliter wide mouth plastic sample containers. If you prefer sample bottles without the nitric acid preservative, make sure to discuss in advance with the lab before they send out your shipment. Nitric acid can burn if it comes in contact with skin or clothing. All samples should be collected early in the morning before any water has been used in the building. Water must not be used for no less than 8 hours and no more than 18 hours prior to sampling. You may want to post signs to make sure taps are not used during this time period. To get a sample that best represents water used for drinking and or cooking, avoid collecting samples in the mornings after vacations, weekends, or holidays unless specifically directed to do so. Use only 250 milliliter sample containers supplied by the ELAP certified laboratory. EPA recommends using wide mouth bottles to ensure you are capturing all water that flows from the outlet. Containers should not be opened until you are ready to collect the sample. Sampling containers that have been compromised in any way, such as being touched on the inside surfaces of the bottle or cap, cannot be used. Keep food and drink away from the sampling containers. On the morning of the sampling, perform a quick walkthrough of the facility to ensure no outlets were left running overnight. Begin preparing for the sampling event by having all the items that are needed to collect the samples. Sampling bottles, labels, a waterproof pen, and the laboratory chain of custody paperwork. Non-latex or nitrile gloves can be worn to prevent risk of exposure to the nitric acid preservative that may be in the bottles. If you do wear gloves for the sampling event, it is not necessary to change the gloves in between sampling locations. Make sure no water has been drawn from the outlet before you collect the sample. Begin sampling at the cold water outlet closest to the point of entry, that is, where the water enters the building from the street. If a drinking water fountain is being sampled, angle the container's mouth in a way that it will capture the entire flow of the water from the bubbler. If a faucet is being sampled, make sure you turn on the cold water tap. Do not remove aerators or screens prior to collecting your sample. If the outlet is a motion sensor or metered faucet, collect the sample as you would under normal use conditions. Turn on the cold water outlet and fill the container at the same rate that you would under normal use for drinking or cooking, without allowing any water to run down the drain. Once the sample bottle is full, securely cap the bottle. Record the time the sample was collected on the sample bottle as well as on the chain of custody form. Make sure that the information that is on the bottle is the same information that is recorded on the chain of custody form. Print clearly and legibly so that the lab personnel can easily read the sample information. Record any observations that may affect the sample's results. For example, leaking outlets, discolored water, low water pressure, etc. Now pack the shipping container according to the certified laboratory's instructions. If samples are collected in bottles without the nitric acid preservative, the laboratory must acidify the samples within 14 days of collection. Otherwise, the holding time for a sample collected for lead testing is 6 months. Samples for lead testing do not need to be refrigerated or packed in ice for shipment to the laboratory. 
For more information, please visit the New York State Department of Health website or speak with your local health department.